eat bold with Subway Fiery Footlong Subs. So hot they'll burn the wimp right out of you. Try the new Turkey Jalapeno Melt, a fiery twist on a legendary flavor, and the bold, delicious buffalo chicken, backed by popular demand. Subway, eat fresh. The BS Report is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on mature subjects. First of all, this is the BS Report with Bill Simmons. It might be cool, I don't know. And if it's not, I don't care. The BS Report with Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons works for ESPN. He's also named the sports guy, and he writes a comical sports column. He must be a popular dude. The BS Report. It's got a real dirty sound. Like a rusty steak knife cutting through a well aged steak. No. 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 Here's Bill Simmons. Welcome to the BS Report, another sunny day here in Southern California. We're taping this on a Friday. I think we're running it a couple of days later. A fall TV preview with our favorite TV critic from hitfix.com on the Subway Fresh Take Hotline. Right now, Alan Sepp and while it's happening. I'm writing and watching 24 7 right now, Bill. It's a fun it's a fun time for you, but on the other hand, not really a fun time because a lot of these shows suck. Oh yeah, this is not really a good new season. I mean there there's two great new shows, but they're both on cable. There's a couple of network shows that might be good, but overall in terms of the, the new network stuff, there's not a ton that I'm excited about. But I have to still watch and write about it all. All right. I want to go through day by day because uh I always think it's funny how they change the schedule or what gets what gets uh bestowed like a big time slot or whatever but we can agree that the the big show that uh you got me a little more excited about is boardwalk empire yes yeah that is far and away the best thing and i'm, I'm glad you're going to get the shot now because uh i've seen i think six episodes of it and it, it's pretty fantastic i was a little worried i thought maybe this was like scorsese's 1973 willie mays med season or something but it doesn't sound like it no no it 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 looks like a scorsese thing it's got terry winter who was always the number two guy on the sopranos writing it you know he wrote pine barons and the adrian episode and a lot of the best episodes of that show the cast is great it looks incredible i mean you know you got steve buscemi and omar from the wire as 20s gangsters it's pretty damn cool what uh what night is that running and what time that's Sundays at nine. Um, I don't know. Depending on exactly when this debuts, it's starting on the night of the nineteenth. And Dexter is starting this uh, this weekend or next weekend? Next weekend, the twenty sixth. So Sunday nights for me are going to be just a bastard because it's going to be uh, Boardwalk Empire, Dexter, Mad Men, and Rubicon for a while, which are all shows I write write a lot about usually. So, yeah, I mean, so yeah, there's like at least what six Mad Men left, five Mad Men left. Uh, I think the ninth one airs this Sunday, so there would be five left. Nice overlap. Wow, that is going to be a crazy night. Push against Sunday Night Football. Yep, yep. Uh, and the Giants play the Colts this weekend, so I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Right. Um, all right, well, I'm looking at the Entertainment Weekly. I love the, the fall TV preview. I, I think Entertainment Weekly just releases previews every week, it seems like, now, and I enjoy all of them. People uh, like previews. They, uh, they have Hawaii Five O. Yes. CBS, Monday. 10 p.m. Yeah. As their number one choice to be a network hit this year. Do you agree? Probably. Um, you know, it's sort of right network, right time slot, right kind of show. But, you know, there was a while back CBS remade The Fugitive, and I thought that was going to be great, and nobody watched that. So, you know, I'm always terrible at prognosticating. But as, as network shows go, that's pretty well done. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. They got the guy who directed Live Free or Die Hard to do the pilot. Scott Kahn's really funny in it, and it's it's Hawaii. Here you go. Ready? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who that doesn't was, like that song? It's a great song. I mean, it's a great title and a great song. And even though Book of Dano means nothing to anybody under 35 years old, I think it can carry the next generation. I was stunned that... Uh, I mentioned this in a podcast with Jacko. I'll mention it again. I was stunned that Scott Kahn is stealing scenes in this show. I mean, I like Scott Kahn, but it, I mean, can he really steal scenes in a real show? Absolutely. I mean, right. Scott Kahn's funny. Didn't you see the Ocean's Eleven movies? Yeah, I thought he was good in that. And as I said with Jacko, like he 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 was really good in Entourage, but when he's blowing Kevin Connolly off the screen, yeah, Entourage you can never is really... not really difficult. Although I will say that the guy who's the lead in Hawaii Five O is. Maybe, maybe a rung above Adrian Grenier in terms of your ability to, to steal from. I was going to ask, where does he rank on the on the Dermot Mulroney scale of guys who keep getting a chance for no real reason that we can figure out? Uh, he's up there. This is his third show in a row at CBS. They love him over there, and I, I think this will probably be the hit for him. But 
you know, if I'm watching it, I'm watching it for Scott Kahn. Wow. Yeah. You're all in on Scott Kahn. You pushed all your chips into the table. I did not expect much from this, and then I put it on, and Scott Kahn is really funny, sort of, you know, electric. I liked him. It's, yeah, I think TV is probably a better medium for him. I'd, uh, I'd like to know what show couldn't succeed at Monday night at 10 o'clock on CBS. That would be a good reality contest or some sort of contest. I, I feel like they could put anything in there. It's going to get a top 15 rating. Well, I mean, I don't, you know, Caruso and his sunglasses were sort of in a free fall the last couple of years. Is so. that true? Oh, yeah, well, then I stand corrected. That's the reason they're moving it. I mean, that show used to be the most popular thing in the world, and now they're, they're ghettoizing it to Sundays. Uh, so long, Caruso. Uh, another show that they like, and i got to say, this, this, uh, this synopsis sounds intriguing. It's called Lone Star. Yeah, that is probably the best of the pilots. It's the sort of con man drama set in Texas. A uh, new guy named James Walk, who I like a lot, and Tyra from Friday Night Lights, Adrian Palicki's in yep. it. Yep, say, say no more. Yep, I could. And John Voight and David Keith. So, not Keith David, David Keith. So, it's <laughs> it's a really good pilot, but it's one of those shows where you watch it and you sort of get to the end and you're like, okay, that was really good, but uh, I don't know that there's a show there. Like, I don't know if they can get past seven or eight episodes without running out of story, but it's definitely the best of the pilots by far. It's on Fox on Mondays at 9, and the synopsis says that James Wilk is a con man juggling two identities. Yep. Um, John Voight is, is a blustering oil tycoon. Um, Tyra is married to one of James Wilk's two personalities, or whatever you call them. Yeah. And then David Keith plays the crooked dad. It's a nighttime yeah. soap. They call it a nighttime soap, which I like. And, and he also has a gorgeous girlfriend in his other identity uh, who can stack up to Tyra. So it's he's living a good life. I got to say, I'm, I'm a little partial to the double identity things. I, I, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite gimmicks. It's a no, good it's, one. It, it's, it's a good one. The creator sort of said he was kind of inspired by Mad Men and, and other shows like that. So yeah. we'll, we'll see if they can make that work on a network. All right, so Entertainment Weekly also likes Blue Bloods, which is buried on Friday night at 10 p.m. on CBS. It has Tom, Se- Tom Selleck. Um, now, this is a tough one for me because it has Donnie Wahlberg, who I really like, who's, a, who's probably the biggest Celtics fan on the planet and actually uses his money in good ways and flies to games and flies to Sacramento and things like that, a legitimate fan. And then, on the other hand, Bridget Moynihan's in this, who tried to destroy the Patriots dynasty. So I don't know how to feel about this. How do I feel about this? But look, look at it this way, you know, success for Bridget means more stability in the, the baby mama relationship with Brady. All right, that's a fair way to put it. By the way, she's got, she, who's gotten more chances than her over the past 10 years? Yeah, well, you know, she and Piper Parabo started out in Coyote Ugly, you know. Yeah. Now, they're, now they're doing TV. I, uh, I, I, I don't see that working at 10 p.m. on a Friday. That's yeah, just too I, weird I, of a time. But the, the CBS audience will like it. It's just a question of, like, It'll get a big overall number, but it'll be mostly people over 50, and then it's just a question of whether CBS can make money doing that. But old people love Tom Selleck. How many Tom Selleck comebacks are we up to? Uh, let's see. There, like, like, there's at least five, I think. Because don't forget Friends Tom Selleck comeback. That was like 1995. That was 15 years ago. Yeah, no, he, got, he got a sitcom out of it on CBS that was yeah. awful called The Closer. So then he did those Jesse Stone movies. He's done a couple different things. Um, one that I think looks promising, I don't know if I'm going to make it, and, the, and Entertainment Weekly liked it, Raising Hope, which is on Tuesdays on Fox at 9 p.m. It's done by the guy, Greg Garcia, who created My Name is Earl, who I think is really talented, and it's about uh, a 20-something single dad living at home with his parents. What do you think of this one? Uh, I, I definitely laughed more at that than at any of the other new sitcom pilots. Um, it's very much got that My Name is Earl vibe, sort of, you know, dumb white trash, trying to do simple tasks and not knowing how to do it. So he's, he's trying to raise this baby that he inherited from a death row inmate, and he doesn't, like, know that you have to strap in the car seat or how to feed a baby out of a bottle or anything. And it's kind of funny. I just I don't know if I want to watch week after week of baby endangerment. Um, three more, they say, to keep an eye on. Now, this... Actually, Nate, you know what? Let's get to those when we're going to the day-by-day thing. So let's go okay. to Monday. We're going to go to Monday night. Okay. This is exciting. Um, the only new show on CBS from the 8 to 10 comedy block that they have is a show called Mike and Molly, which, as far as I can tell, um, is about really fat people. Yes. Yeah, a couple, they meet in Overeaters Anonymous. They fall in love. Now, who is the audience for this show? 
Um, the same audience that watches, you know, Two and a Half Men and Big Bang Theory. It's the same sort of creative team. Uh, I don't know. They, CBS has made a lot of money off of these people so far. All right. Well, it seems like somebody made a bet. Like, what's the most ridiculous idea that nobody will watch? We can put in this two-hour block and still get a rating, and then they come up with Mike and Molly. That's my take. Well, no, but here's the here's the thing, though. Before Friends, like, you could basically put anybody in a sitcom of any age or size or shape or whatever, and as long as they were funny, it worked. Then Friends becomes a hit, and suddenly all comedies have to have young and attractive people, and that pretty much killed the sitcom right there. So the the lead guy Billy Gardell, who's a stand-up comic, uh, in this he's funny. I like him, and I you know I don't love the show necessarily, but I'm sort of glad to see sort of different kind of people out there. So you're longing for the days when, which we grew up with, where you had Sanford and Son. He's a janitor. You had good times. Uh, lower I mean, class. I know, I know you keep talking family. about doing a Cheers remake, but like they would never allow George Wynn or John Ratzenberger on the 2010 version of that show ever. Because they wouldn't quote unquote test well. They wouldn't test well. They would want like you know some some you know, d bag twenty something you know in, in sort of the cliff role. I mean everybody would sort of have to be young and good looking in some way. When do you want to have our fight about the league? Do you want to have it right now, or do you want to wait till the end of the podcast? Let's save it for the end of the podcast. Okay, whenever you want. Um, I'm here. NBC on Monday night. Poor NBC. They're like, they're really like the Detroit Lions of TV networks. Yep. They're trotting out. I think they made a rule this year that none of their shows could have more than eight letters. <laughs> uh, eight o'clock Chuck, nine o'clock the event, and then ten o'clock Chase. <laughs> Chase. It's just giving up. Ah, let's name it Chase. Screw it. Nobody's going to watch it anyway. Uh, for some reason, I'm intrigued by the event because they're pushing it as, hey, if you like 24 and lost and you're going to miss like that kind of serial, keep you hanging at the end of, at 958, this is the show for you. Do you buy it? No, because it's, I mean, it plays like a parody of one of those shows. It's like it's an hour of just teasing you, you know, what is the event? And, you know, let, we're, people are talking around and using pronouns. You know, he's going to tell them about the event. He can't, but he's going to. Yeah. We have to stop him. I mean, it's just, it, there's nothing there. It sounds awful. I'm not yeah. going to watch it. Screw you, the event. Uh, Chase? <laughs> Chase and, uh, Skip Chase, uh, Jerry Brockheimer Show, U.S. Marshal, running around, no characterization, no story, just, you know people with guns out i really feel like they just gave up when they came up with the title like that's it they're ah, we're gonna get canceled anyway let's, let's go chase it's short well, it, the Bruckheimer. So i mean it's they, they have this sort of weird rhyming scheme because they did without a trace they did the amazing race they did cold case now they got chase castle improbably is back on abc for i think this is a third season I've never met, not only have I never met anybody who, who watches the show regularly, I don't think I've ever met anybody who's seen the show even once, so I guess you're the first person i met. Is this show, what happens on this show? The detective show, the gimmick is he's like a best-selling mystery author who winds up, you know, through the sort of contrivance you have on TV, becoming attached to an NYPD homicide unit. And so he sort of helps them solve cases using his, the knowledge he's built up as a mystery writer. That sounds awful. It's, um, it's kind of fun. The guy in it, Nathan Fillion, is really sort of charming and goofy and funny. Uh, I don't really watch it an awful lot, but it's not bad. So it sounds like my game plan for Monday nights, and I don't really watch a ton of network TV anyway, but Monday Night Football and then TiVo Hawaii Five-0 and kind of zoom through it. That's what I'm going to do on Monday night. I've, Tuesday I've, night. I've, I've tried and failed to talk you into Chuck. That's fine. We'll move on. Eh. Just can't, <laughs> can't do it. Tuesday. ABC started this new show with uh, your guy Chickless, No yep. Ordinary Family. It's an hour at 8 o'clock, which is a little uh, offbeat. Isn't it like a comedy drama type show? What is it? Uh, it's, it's a little mix of both family. They get superpowers. Uh, oh, God. Like sort of live action Incredibles, basically. Oh, great. I'll be you don't sound now. enthused. Dan <laughs> at 9 o'clock, the Dancing with the Stars results show. <laughs> I love that that's like a show. <laughs> All right, so we plug that in at 9, the results show. Uh, and then at 10, a show that has a great title, and uh, I'm going to drop a big theory on here. It's called Detroit 187. Yeah, the star yeah. is, uh, is Michael Imperioli, who we know from Goodfellas, and then The Sopranos is Christopher. I feel like Christopher was too iconic of a character. I can't buy him in another TV show. I think he, I think certain shows, and, and this happened to George Went. For me, this happened to Ted Danson. He did go on to have some success, but... You know, Matthew Perry, I think, is another one. You go on down the line. If a character really resonates and it's a big show and you, and you have a lot of big moments with that character, I don't think you can come back on another TV show. 
I think he's good though. Um, you know, he, he's. I'm not really saying he's not, not. I'm not saying he's bad or anything. I'm just saying for me personally. He's just Christopher. I can't yeah. get away from it. You know but what I mean? Saying, like, I, I spent the entire run of The Sopranos writing for the hometown paper, The Sopranos, the, the New York Ledger. You know, I covered the hell out of that show. I do not see Christopher when I watch him in this. He, really? He, he's older. He's gray, He's gone gray. Uh, it, it's very good. He carries himself differently. It's a very good performance. The show is kind of mediocre, but he's real good at it. How do they use Detroit? I mean, do they just play up the whole, ooh, Detroit, it's not doing well? They, they like film a location, like, I'll, I'll give you one scene, you know, the, two of the other cops uh, are dealing with a shooting that happened on an overpass, and they're, they're going to look for the bullet, and while they're looking for it, they find, like, five other bullets, unrelated, just from different cases, and it's, they throw up their hands because it's Detroit. Hmm. I'm out on that one. I'm okay. not going to watch it. Unless... It becomes so good that I uh, that I have to catch up on season one. I'm just, you know, that's fine. Yeah, great title though. Love the title. Yep. Uh, we covered on Fox. Well, actually, let's talk about this because okay, the Glee thing. Yes. Too much hype, like too much. I feel like it's kind of in my face now. It's, you know, Fox knew how to promote this thing. It's, it's in your face, and that's why it's a hit, and that's why not a lot of other things have been hits lately, because they just they put this everywhere nationwide all the time. And in your opinion, what is the wheelhouse audience for this show? Uh, let's see, p- sort of theater fans, you know, people who love show tunes, musicals in general, uh, and people sort of love teen drama, and I don't really fit any of those boxes. So Chad Ochocinco, maybe not the audience for Glee. Probably not, although Chad Ochocinco was on the league last night, which I guess we'll get to later. Yeah, all right. I get, I got to put on the boxing gloves for that one. <laughs> the weirdest show, I think, in my opinion, the weirdest show of the entire 2010 fall season, it's called Running Wild. And I, have a, I don't... It's almost like a parody of a show, which maybe that's what they intended because it's done by the Arrested Development guys. And, and it's basically one guy is like the, the typical upper class douchebag guy. And then he somehow ends up living in a house with, with somebody who's an eco person. And, I, and that's the plot. That's, that's all I can tell. Do you, what do you know about this show? Uh, I mean, I've seen it. It's I had high hopes for it because I loved Arrested Development. It's, you know, Will Arnett is, was in that. Carrie Russell's the girl. Uh, it's not that good though. It's I don't know that it's necessarily the problem is that the premise is goofy. It's just it's it's not all that funny. I, Will Arnett worked really well as one sort of small piece of Arrested Development. He's playing basically the same character. I, I don't think that guy works as the main character on the show. Uh, and they're basically I mean they're they're writing for Carrie Russell like she's Jason Bateman, which is weird. So it sounds awful. No, I. I I'm hoping they can pull it out, but they've had two different swings at the pilot so far, and neither is all that good. But Arrested Development was great, so I'm going to give them a long leash. I'm just going to say that Will Arnett's had a lot of at-bats. Fair amount. A lot of at-bats. He's had at least five or six now, when you move his in TV. And, uh, and I think he hit a double in Arrested Development, maybe a triple? He was, he was fantastic on that show. I a mean, home run? You're giving it. a home run? That's one of the great, it was the best comedy of the last 10 years, Bill. I would say home run. All right. I disagree, but we'll okay. go to Wednesday. Um, Maybe we'll have to box about that, too. All right, Wednesday. ABC has The Middle. Is that a new show? No, that was on last year. Okay. And who, and who who's in that? Patricia Heaton from Everybody Loves Raymond. She's a mom, lives in Indiana. It's it's pretty good. Okay. And then Not better. changing, but saw a little comedy. Better with you? That's not so good. A new one? Yeah, that's a new one. Relationship <laughs> comedy. It's got the future Mrs. Nick Swisher, Joanna Garcia, uh, a couple other people. It's basically like three different couples who are all related in different phases, and it's, it's got a laugh track, and you got to be really funny these days to be allowed to have a laugh track, and they're not. The creator is Shanna Goldberg Meehan. How do I know that name? I know that I think she worked so. for Friends. You yeah, probably saw sense. her name in the Friends credits a lot. Uh, all right. I have a feeling my wife's going to watch that show, and then we'll fight about it. Um, and then The Whole Truth is on at 10 o'clock on ABC. That's a new one. Yeah, that's another Bruckheimer one. It's Rob Morrow and, and Maura Tierney, newly recovered from cancer. Oh. They're lawyers on different sides of a case, and you sort of get to see each side equally. And then at the end, you find out what the whole truth really was, Bill. I went on a date with Maura Tierney's sister in, like, 1997. <laughs> really? How about that? Yeah. 
She's cute. We took her to a Celtic game, and at halftime, she thought the game was over, and she started to get up, and that's when I knew it wasn't going to make it. <laughs> like, ah, there's actually two halves. Sorry. Can I, I, I get like another beer? Tierney, I will not be watching this show. Well, Rob Morrow, you know, when you think, like, this guy was a legitimate star in Northern Exposure. Yeah. And then he had sunk to, he's in Entourage as, like, a bit part. It's like you're watching, and you're going, is that, is that Rob? Is that Rob Morrow? Like, it not even, like, build. He's playing somebody else. Like that's a pretty... I bet he would do the Northern Exposure uh, leaving the show thing over again if he had to. I just remember that, that Boston accent he had in Quiz Show, and I, I looked at that, I'm like, okay, that, he's not going to have a movie career now. One of the three or four worst Boston accents <laughs> in the history. Porn stars have come up with better Boston accents. <laughs> that, that is actually the one that I lean on whenever I'm trying to do a Boston accent, is I just imitate Rob Morrow in Quiz Show. I don't know why Redford just didn't fire him. I think that goes on Redford's resume, doesn't it? Redford, if you're a good director and you don't fire Rob Morrow two two days into the filming of that, yeah, I can't put, make you in the Hall of Fame. Uh, that's a shame. It's a real that, good movie other than that. This leads us to my single favorite terrible show of the 2010 uh, fall lineup. This show... I tweeted about this. I saw an ad for it on the on a bus, and I actually thought about careening into the ad just just to see if I could uh, hurt it in some way. It's called The Defenders. It has Jim Belushi and Jerry O'Connell, and they're like wacky lawyers in Vegas, and it's a comedy and it's a drama, and oh, it sounds it just. I'm I'm gonna shock the hell out of you, Bill. It does oh, not no. stink. It does not stink. Oh no, really? Here's the thing about Belushi. Belushi has had some of the worst taste in projects of any actor who has lasted as long as he has. It's just, I mean, according to Jim and K-9 and all these movies are terrible, he's not untalented. And this is not a great show or anything, but he's kind of funny and likable in it. I'm stunned. I, you know, I probably won't watch past episode three, but it is far from the worst new show of the season. Far. We need to... Um at some point in our lives, really look back at Jim Belushi's performance in About Last Night and wonder what happened and whether yep. he underachieved or overachieved because he was so good in that movie. I'm not sure. He's so good in that. He, like, when he does drama, he's real good, like Salvador and Thief and things like that. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I interviewed him. He told me the story about how when he joined Second City, John kept saying, no, no, you should do drama. You should do drama. And at the time, he thought John was just being jealous. But in, in retrospect, maybe John was onto something. I read some quote, and I thought it was in this, but it's not. But he had some quote about how during the last season of According to Jim, he was like the last few episodes, he was just kind of looking at his watch, waiting to get out of there. I was like, the last five? <laughs> <laughs> you mean the last 45? Uh, all right, let's go to Thursday night. Hold on, hold on. We, we can't leave Wednesday yet because it's not in the EW, but the, the other best new show of the season is on Wednesdays. It's oh. on FX. Oh, no. Carriers. It's a oh. terrible name. But it's a really good show, Private Eyes, Donna Logue and this guy Michael Raymond James are sort of low-rent, bottom-of-the-barrel Private Eyes in Ocean Beach. And it's the guy who did The Shield, Sean Ryan is on it, the guy who wrote the Ocean's Eleven movies, Ted Griffin is writing it. It's really funny, sort of works as both a buddy comedy and sort of a you know, hard-boiled Private Eye show. It's really good, sort of has a Midnight Run vibe to it, which I know you'd like. It's definitely I a Bill Simmons kind of show. I'm ashamed to uh, say that I was going to mention it and forgot it was a Wednesday night show because they mailed me some of the DVDs and I liked it. Okay, I thought good. it was so, good. It's a good one. I, so although, I've never really fully come to grips with Donald Logue. Well, I mean, he was Jimmy the Cab Driver. Come on. I don't know. He's in that Will Arnett zone for me. He's had a lot of at-bats. But you, but you liked the show, right? I did like the show. I kind of wish that somebody different had played his character, though. That was but, my one. But he and the other guy have really great chemistry, and sort of, a, there hasn't been a good show like that in a long time where it's just two guys you really like trading jokes, going back and forth, having each other's back, and yet there's also a good story attached. Yeah, you know? I agree. I didn't, I didn't think he was bad. I'm just I, he's familiar to me. I've been I've been with him in other things. You know, I almost okay. kind of wish they had gone with a new guy. Thursday lineup. Uh, ABC is my generation at eight o'clock. Oh, what is that? Oh, so bad. Really? So bad. This is all three of the worst shows of the season are on Thursday, and this is one of them. Oh. <laughs> let me, hold on, let me guess. Is is S H asterisk T? My dad says. What are the other two? I, I don't want to spoil it, Bill, but you may be onto something. I mean, it looks horrible, and and hey, Shatner. Haven't we had enough of Shatner? Uh, 
Shatner. Well, I mean, do you want to just skip over my generation and go to that? Yeah, no, go back to my generation. Okay, all right. So the gimmick is it's the high school class of 2000. Someone shot a documentary about them and then comes to see everybody 10 years later. And sort of every single person's life has turned out the exact opposite of what they would have predicted at the end of high school. And they're sort of dealing with that. And it's just so pretentious and so, like, not subtle and beat you over the head. And it's not good. It's based on a Swedish show. That's always a bad sign. Sometimes foreign imports work. This, you know, the office was from England. It, it happens. This is not a good one. You know when foreign imports work from Sweden? When it's porn. Um, <laughs> let's you know, go. go see the girl with the dragon tattoo? <laughs> no. Uh, Joe Mead, prepare to bleep me because why not? My dad says. We should just call it that. I mean, it's just such... It, it's so ridiculous that they've taken this Twitter title that you can't say on television and turned it into the name of the show, but the show's bad. It's really bad. It's a great example of how bad network executives are, because this guy you know, had a lot of followers on Twitter, very, very clever Twitter feed, um, and got a book out of it, and I actually liked the book. I thought it was well done. It should have stopped there. Yeah, no, it doesn't, and casting Shatner, I, I get why they did that. It was the worst possible decision, because... The character, I mean, he's like this crotchety old dad who says politically incorrect things. And the character only works if the guy doesn't know that he's funny. Yeah. And Shatner always knows that he's funny. So. Yeah, well, you, you could have stopped that the show has William Shatner in it. Um, Alan Arkin, I thought, is he still alive? He is, yeah. That's who I'm thinking, somebody like that. I love Alan Arkin, In-Laws, one of the great movies. Um, let's go to Outsourced. Uh, which is another uh, one of the uh, worst ideas. I actually, I actually can't, you know, I've, obviously I'm biased. My friend Corolla had an NBC pilot that didn't get picked up. And it, and it, it, you know, it stings enough when you don't have a pilot get picked up. And I'm not saying his pilot deserved to get picked up or not. I've actually never seen it. I don't know if it, if it was good or not. But to not get picked up but then have Outsourced be the one, one of the ones that got picked up ahead of yours, that's a tough one. No, and, and what really stings is not only did it get picked up ahead of these other things, but they're they're keeping Parks and Recreation, which is their best comedy, on the shelf for this show that's A, got a, a terrible premise, and B, is awful. So I don't know what they're thinking. It's based in India, right? Yeah, the idea is a guy from like a Midwestern novelty company, the call center gets outsourced to India, and he's sent there to run it. And basically every single joke is only funny if the characters have Indian accents. It's like... So lazy and gross and weird and not good. Well, it sounds great. Uh, CW oh, yeah. has the Vampire Diaries. This is funny. Way to, way to catch the wave about a year late. No, that, that's not new. That was on last year. They oh, were, okay. Well, were, then they caught the wave the in wave. time. Yep. <laughs> uh, Nikita is new, though, right? Yep. Although, I mean, it's like the sixth different version of Nikita, but yeah. Yeah, they just keep they keep pushing the hot female spy thing, and, and unless she's going to get naked in a couple of the scenes, people just aren't going to buy a long run. Alias was the best you could do with that genre, right? The Alias was, was really good, yeah. And nobody watched Alias. Yeah, no, and I realized we, when Wednesday we completely skipped over, uh, what was it called? Undercovers, which was the new J.J. J. Abrams spy show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what did you think of that? Oh, it's fine. It's not, it's not great. The, you know, very attractive couple, you know, good chemistry, but it, it, whatever. <laughs> the only thing I noticed about that show is that the lead actress has a name that there's no way in hell I could pronounce. I believe, I, I, I may get this wrong, it's Gugu Mbatha Raw. Yeah, I'm not even going to try that. Yeah. Moving to Fridays. Um, well, this is a little sad. No more Ghost Whisper. It's over. Uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt, it's time to move on. She'll find something else. I always she miss always being does. able to flick channels on a Friday night at about 8, 10, and knowing I could see your jubblies for a second. <laughs> uh, I was just always amused when, like, Jay Moore was on that for a couple of years. Like, that that's where Jay Moore's career wound up for a while. <laughs> I actually watched it once, and it, it it's really... It's really well, it was really well done, but it was terrible. It was one of those you forget like sometimes the TV like they do know what they're doing, but you have this terrible premise and you have Jennifer Love Hewitt trying to act, but at the same time they have cool special effects and great camera work. And you forget like how much time and energy people put into polishing a piece of turd. That's my little rant. Uh, ABC Friday, <laughs> the eight and nine o'clock spots say. say TBD. I'm guessing that's a bad sign. 
Um, yeah, I forget exactly what... It's weird because their other new show, Body of Proof, doesn't even have a premiere date yet. So I think the idea is they're just going to vamp on Fridays for a while and then see what fails on the other networks. Hmm. Well, that's not really the explanation I was looking for. I mean, if you can't come up with enough shows to fill your open lineup spots, that's probably not a great sign. Maybe that's why they changed uh, network heads. Possibly. There, There was a lot of stuff going on there. (laughs) <laughs> then we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, NBC, 8 o'clock, School Pride. This sounds like some sort of Glee ripoff, and I don't know what it's about, so what is it? Uh, reality show, Cheryl Hines, who's Larry David's wife on uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, oh. producer. I think the idea is they, they sort of help. It's an extreme makeover show for schools. Yeah. You left out the recently single Cheryl Hines. People love Cheryl Hines. I know you do. Blue Bloods, we covered. Friday, 10 o'clock, Death Slot. Outlaw on oh, NBC. Outlaw. Another one? An, oh, I love Outlaw because it's so terrible. Oh, <laughs> so terrible. It's Jimmy Smith's... Okay, let me, let me see if I can get through this without laughing. Jimmy okay. Smith is an a, is a incredibly conservative Supreme Court justice. His father is a liberal. His father dies. Jimmy Smith realizes his political ideology has been completely wrong he becomes a liberal. He quits the Supreme Court to go into private practice and travel the country as a crusading defense lawyer. I mean, and all, you, all of his legal clerks from the Supreme Court follow him. When you talk about people who have gotten too many at bats, Jimmy Smith might be number one. I God, I love Jimmy Smith, but somebody said the other day that he's never actually carried something, and no, and right. I mean, LA Live is an ensemble. NYPD Blue, he had Franz. You know, when you put him as the head of something. It does not seem to work out. What was the show? I think it was on two years ago, and it lasted like four episodes, and it was like this Mexican... Cane. They were, I believe they were Cuban. Cuban. Yes. I thought that show was kind of cool, I got to say. Did you watch that show? Yeah, it was, it was not bad. It was okay. And it had potential. The idea of like Cuban-American Godfather could have been yeah. good, but it's, I, don't know, I didn't think the execution was great. But yeah, certainly better than this. The show that should be a show, and I can't believe nobody has done this, and I can't believe how dumb TV executives are. And one of these years, I just want to become one for a year. How has there not been a Scarface TV series? Who would say, oh, no, the Scarface TV series on, I'm not going to watch the pilot? Nobody. Not one person. Everyone's watching Scarface. Like, Spike should absolutely do that. Spike? What about HBO, Showtime, Stars, one of those? HBO's doing Boardwalk Empire. They got their, their new gangster piece. They don't need another one right now. Well, somebody, how about FX as okay. doing a Scarface? F, I mean, FX has, has a bunch of sort of criminal shows. they got Sons of Anarchy, which is pretty great. It's, it's not quite the same thing, but I think it could definitely work, sure. When you look at the structure of Scarface, and God knows I have because I've been watching it for 30 <laughs> years. I mean, just before he even meets Robert Loggia's character, that's six episodes. Yes, sure. The, the chainsaw scene in the shower, that's like a two-parter. <laughs> You can stretch that out for two hours. Everything. I mean, all right. I'm I'm not saying it's a bad idea. Season one could end with him killing Robert Loggia, and we don't. Would, would, would Robert Loggia still play the Robert Loggia role? Yeah, I think we get him back. Okay, <laughs> I think he's available. I would watch Scarface the TV show. I can't believe that hasn't happened. I also would watch Midnight Run the TV show. We talked it about terrors before. That. It wasn't very good. Well, I'd watch it again because I missed it. Okay. Uh, Sundays. Looks like everything's the same. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, they've they moved some shows around. That's where CSI Miami is now. Um, but yeah, it's most it's mostly returning stuff on Sundays. So plus, plus Boardwalk Empire. Don't forget that. Yeah, the networks. It seems like it's for people over fifty years old in the networks, and then all the cool people like us watch the cable shows and football. Mostly. You know, I mean, yeah. definitely, Glee is not a case of that. Young people, oh, yeah, young people watch a lot of these shows, but definitely, you know, the biggest audience for the networks is always, you know, sort of 50 plus, And that's a problem. No. Because adver- advertisers want 49 and younger. I meant, I meant Sunday. Oh, I guess oh, since, sun, since, sun, oh, Sunday in particular. Yeah. I guess the f- Fox is getting all the young people. Oh yeah. You know what? Amazing races gets a lot of people. I, I recant, yeah. I recant that statement. Okay. That's fine. Amazing race. though. I've never understood why people, are so fanatical about that one compared to the people who are fanatical about Survivor because I think Survivor is a much more clever show. Because what they like is that there's no there's no backstabbing involved. It's just the game. Uh, the game nature. is the game. It's just who, you finish in first place, 
you do well, you finish in last place, you lose. The rest, you know, the rest of it is what it is, and it's it's put together really well. I'm going to make a prediction right now. I think okay. this is going to be a disastrous Survivor season. Disastrous. Because there's two problems. One is they, they did the uh, old versus young thing, which is just a terrible idea. Nobody wants to see ten old people on a reality show in, in skimpy clothing. and We just don't want to see it. It's an HD. Give me 20 good-looking people. But uh, they're also following Survivor All-Stars, which was probably the best season in the history of the show, and then two consecutive Russell seasons, who was the best character in the history of the show. Uh, I compared I it on... Well, I, I compared... I, you okay. disagree? I hate Russell. I really hate Russell. Who's a more polarizing character than Russell, though? I, I think Russell was, was a lot of hype that the show built up. I think he was really good at talking about himself in those interviews, and therefore they built him up. Uh, but I... I found him both insufferable and not nearly as good a player as both he and the show thought he was. Well, here's my response. How dare you? <laughs> I loved Russell. Okay. I mean, the guy was spotting immunity idols like they were freaking yeah, it was crazy. They, they basically buried them an inch below the sand. They yeah, made they them impossible for people to miss. They did. Well, the last two seasons were great, and this season looks like it's not going to be very good. And then just, I think, the follow-up of coming off those other two feels like almost... Uh, when you have like a great sports team that's had a couple good years, and then they have like the like the Red Sox having like an eighty two yeah. and eighty year, and you're just like, uh. Well, you but might it, be excited then because the rumor for the season after this one is the gimmick is one team is led by Russell and one team is led by Boston Rob. Oh, well, that's almost like an MTV ploy. Yeah, they, I mean, basically, I think they've just sort of recognized that at this point the show cannot succeed without Russell, or at least that's what they think. Yeah, well, you might be right. Yeah, and you're out on the challenge, right? Because that's starting on October 6th. And, uh, I, CT's I watched, coming back. No, no, no. I think I stopped watching the whole franchise around uh, real world London. All right, so big overview here. It really seems like cable is just crushing the networks and the quality of these shows. And well, in terms of the new stuff, yeah, last year the networks had a real good new season, you know, Community and Modern Family and Good Wife and a few things like that, you know, Parenthood. This year it's not a good network season, and, and the two best shows are the cable ones. But Glee, do you think, has a chance to maybe move into, like, the top ten, top five? It seems like that's the breakout of all yeah, well, I mean, that's it was a big hit last year. They're going to air it for the first half of the season without American Idol. So we'll see how strong it is. You know, that worked for House once upon a time. So, you know, I'm not a fan of it, but it obviously the people who love it are crazy for it. So, and there seems to be a lot of them. American Idol has Simon leaving. Now, that this doesn't happen until January. So I guess technically it's a winter preview. But uh, yeah. I think the J-Lo thing was really smart. Stephen Perry was a terrible idea, and they're going to regret it. Steven Tyler, sorry. Uh, they're going to regret that. But J-Lo, I think, is going to be good. See, I think the mistake is, it, we'll, we'll see about J-Lo. Steven Tyler is definitely a bad choice. But the mistake is, like, they decided, all right, we need really famous people to replace them. Simon wasn't famous. Nobody knew who Simon was. And he was yeah. great. Right. They needed somebody with an attitude who, no, the thing with Simon and the thing that made him special on that show, I thought, is that, I, at, the, at the heart of it, he really did know music, and he knew who was the star, and he knew, you know, when a song was good, you almost looked to Simon to give it that stamp of approval, and if you didn't, um, you just felt like, oh, well, maybe I didn't hear that correctly or whatever. You just trusted him. Yeah. And I don't know, out of the three judges that they have now, who am I going to trust out of those three, which makes me think I'm just going to stop watching the show. You know, and you certainly, I don't even know why Randy's still there. People keep saying they need continuity or something, but he had, that's literally the only thing he adds. So, I don't know, man. It's a little pitchy. A little pitchy for me. Yeah, I think I think this new judging panel is going to be a fiasco for them. The uh, the Tyler thing, I just don't get. I mean, as, as uh, my friend Dickie Barrett said, like, you, you can't even, people from Boston can't understand Steven Tyler. Like, it, I don't think, I think Amer they might have to use closed captioning for him. He's almost incoherent at this point. Really strange. I wouldn't be surprised if he got fired after like eight episodes, or they claim that uh, they claim that um, he was exhausted or some sort of bogus excuse. So I'm just they, wrote, they wrote Ellen out for a whole season, even though it was clear she wasn't working. I don't I don't know that they're equipped to change horses midstream. Well, at least Ellen was smart enough to realize that it was the wrong format for her, and she's yeah. too nice, and and she got out, which I give her credit for because I'm sure she walked away from some cash. So. Let's go to the league. Okay. 
You like the show, which is the single most disappointing thing you've ever written or told. Me. I, I like it sometimes, but okay. Here, attack, please. Well, what do you like about this show? I don't get it. I think it's funny. It, it's, it's funny when it tries to be about fantasy football. And yes, I know that it's about an eight-team league, and that's incredibly lame. But if you, the episode last night actually had somebody calling them out on that. So the, the show is kind of aware that these guys are losers and not even good fantasy football players. But I, I sort of like the passion of it. I like these actors and the, the improvisation, you know, the chemistry that they have. I don't know. I laugh at it sometimes. You laugh? See, I happened to see last night's show because okay. people were like, oh, the league. Okay. I, I don't know. It just, it just didn't do it for me. Uh, look, it's not it's one of my really favorite shows. Forced. I enjoy it some of the time. I'm not going to go out on a limb to defend it to you. Well, do you, I mean, you were the one touting it on Twitter. I said one, I said one episode was funny. That's you say you said you were sucked in. You said you were back. I'm getting emails from people. Oh, you got to watch the league. Seth Pawal likes it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I have no control over what people email you, Bill, or what they interpret out of 140 characters at a time. It's it's a show I watch some of the time. I chuckled at the premiere. Well, if you if you have a, a show that's a comedy and has eight buddies in a fantasy league doing their draft in Vegas, and I'm not laughing the entire time, then you failed. And maybe that, you know, I think that's why a show like that, it just, I feel like, has to be, has to nail every little nuance. And for me, that show doesn't do it. Fair enough. That's my take. You're, you're uh, also a much more hardcore fantasy player than I've ever been, so. I, I'm also, I, I'm a higher grader for, like, for stuff like that. When it's stuff like that, I feel like, a show like that, you should be watching it, and people should remind you of, oh, that reminds me of this guy. Oh, that reminds me of something that happened there. And, and they went the other way, and they went very, like, over-the-top slapsticky and in incredible situations. And that, that's where it's like, man, I, really, we couldn't have just come up with a good show? But, but I think you watching the show is like a doctor trying to watch a hospital show. All they're <laughs> going to do is pick it apart. You it's know? funny. You, my stepmother, we, we made her... When uh when ER started that year, the Clooney year, it was yeah. so awesome that year. I mean, that's one of the great shows, seasons ever, the first. Se and we made her, we would not watch it with her because she was picking the most mundane, <laughs> stupid stuff apart because she's an OBGYN. Oh, they would never do it. Oh, the doctor would never have his glove that way. We're like, all right, just go away. You can't watch the show with us. We like the show. We don't, we don't, want, we don't want to be left behind the curtain. So maybe that's how I feel about the league. Yep. Um, last thing. Your first year without lost in like six years. What, what's it been like for you? You're not going to do heroin this year or anything, right? You're well, I mean, back. technically, I'm not really dealing with lost yeah, absence until January. So, you know, we'll, we'll wait until that time comes. But uh, people keep saying, what's the next lost? Or I love lost. What's the next thing I should watch? And there's a lot of great TV shows on there. But I can't think of one that's exactly like that. So it's tough. Well, we had a nice run because Sopranos was 99. Yeah. Lost popped up right around the end of Sopranos. And then Mad Men showed up pretty much right around the time when Lost started to become a little absurd. Yeah. Uh, and now Mad Men, I think this season's just been off the charts. Oh, my God. The, the suitcase episode was one of the best hours of TV I've ever seen. Yeah. Now, I thought this would be an interesting column for you. The single greatest episodes of all time. Because that would be that would definitely be on a list. I would I would write that column except I'd miss stuff and I haven't seen everything. But because to me, like my favorite Sopranos episode was always the one when he took Meadow to college in the first season. Yeah, I just thought that was just the great thing about a, an episode like that is it can stand apart from the rest of the series, and yeah. you could almost like you could take somebody who doesn't know anything about the characters and just say just watch this one episode. You don't need to know anything else. And they would think it's great. And I feel that way about the college. It was almost like its own little movie. Um, the suitcase I felt that way about. Yeah. And since Brian Cranston's not going to be eligible next year, maybe Ham finally wins an Emmy for that one. Now, why isn't Brian Cranston going to be eligible? Because Breaking Bad, for whatever reason, AMC is not debuting it until June or July. And it'll basically, the entire season will air after the eligibility period for the next Emmys. Well, I think you just described the reason. Yep. They probably wanted to get some of the Mad Men people, some Emmys. Yep. Right? But it's, I mean, it's a, you say we had a good run. It's still going. We still got Mad Men. We got Breaking Bad, Sons of Anarchy, Justified's really good, Boardwalk Empire's fantastic. Don't put, come on, you can't put Justified in the, in, I'm just on saying, that Justified's list. Justified's a really strong show. That's all. I'm just saying there's a lot of good dramas out there right now. Don't, 
I don't want you to be all woe is me. You know, there's no good TV on. That's all. Boardwalk Empire, I think, will hopefully get there. If, yeah. if you're right, I trust your instincts, except yep. for shows about fantasy football. Um, then the uh, <laughs> what was it? and Dexter. We forgot Dexter. Yeah, uh, Dexter. I used to like more than I do. I still watch it because I think Michael C. Hall is incredible. That's one that I think like if they had made that be a two season show, it, we would remember it as one of the great shows ever. And but the longer they keep it going, sort of the the sillier it gets in some ways. I would agree with that, except I thought the Lithgow season was was a pantheon season for a television show. I thought from episode one through the final moment of the last episode, it, it just delivered. I thought it was incredible. I thought it was really good, but the problem was it was it was they had done a bunch of other seasons before it, and so there was a lot of sort of even though Lithgow was great and Michael C. Hall kind of raised his game for Lithgow, they were repeating a lot of other elements within the Lithgow story. So I'm like, okay, well, I know how this is going to end, and it ended basically exactly how I thought it would. So, so you're saying your ideal Dexter stretch would have been season one, then maybe season two truncated by about four episodes, and then we go right to Lithgow. Yes, exactly. And then this guy shows up, and that is the end of Dexter. And so oh, We left out our friend Jimmy Smits because he ruined season three, or he helped ruin it. Uh, the season three had many problems beyond yeah. Jimmy Smits. It was bad. Who do you think has the upper hand right now, HBO or Showtime? Yeah, uh, HBO definitely. I mean, they, with Boardwalk Empire, the, I mean they are all in. You know, I've, I've talked to people on on some other networks who are like, well, we had a good run there for a while, and now HBO's back. So. Is it fair though? Isn't it like the Yankees? Like they <laughs> spent a hundred billion dollars on a TV show. Nobody does that. True, but it's you can throw money at a problem and not fix the problem. I mean, look at all those expensive Mets teams that are terrible. It's it, this is a particular case. They threw a lot of money. They brought in a lot of high priced talent, and the show's great. Okay. Last thing, what out of all these terrible TV shows we talked about, from an unintentional comedy standpoint? Outlaw. Outlaw, really? So I should just TiVo Outlaw and get a kick out just, of it. Just, every... just watch it. Just watch an episode, and you just even if you don't know anything about how the law works, it is so goofy. So he's a Supreme Court justice who who leaves the bench. Yeah. To to do what again? Private practice. He's just a crusading defense lawyer, you know, going from state to state, helping people out. Has anyone ever left the Supreme Court bench? I'm trying to think. No, never. You die in no, the no bench. One, no one has ever left like that. I mean, there's people who've been really old and said, all right, I'm retiring. You know, Sandra Day O'Connor did that not long ago. Right. But for the most part, you stay on it until you're ready to die. It's the most impact you can have on the law to be in yeah, the Supreme so he Court. Des- he decides, I've been living my life completely wrong. I've been d- defending the wrong side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my incredibly powerful position to go do this. That sounds awful. I'm going to start to on that. Okay. Alan Sepulon will see you on hitfix.com. And, uh, and when does Boardwalk Empire start? Uh, Sunday the 19th. Sunday the 19th of October. Oh uh, no, September. It is de- today's Friday. It's debuting two nights from now. Oh, oh well, people have already heard this by the time. So, oh well. But, but we'll, you know, we'll... It's HBO. I, I believe rumor has it they re-air things. Oh, and apparently there's this on-demand tool that they have now. Yes, well, exactly. I hear the young people are using that. So come back on, and we'll talk about um, a couple weeks. We'll talk about Mad Men and Boardwalk Empire. We will talk to you then. Fantastic. Thanks, Bill. Last thing I wanted to mention, we, we fixed the URL for the BS Report page. It's now ESPN.com slash BS Report. And on that note, we will be going away for a couple of days. Until then. Before I get the sound off. Whoa. Thank you for downloading the BS Report with Bill Simmons. Too much fun. Check out more podcasts at the iTunes Music Store or at PodCenter at ESPNRadio.com. Peace out. This concludes another installment of the BS Report. And with all the talk about sports, Bill Simmons neglected to mention this very important final thought. Eat bold with Subway Fiery Footlong Subs. So hot they'll burn the wimp right out of you. Like the intensely delicious new turkey jalapeno melt. A fiery twist on a legendary flavor with bubbly Monterey cheddar and spicy chipotle southwest sauce. And the backed by popular demand buffalo chicken fiery footlong sub with fire grilled chicken smothered in smoking red hot sauce. Subway Fiery Footlong Subs. They're boldest yet. Subway. Eat fresh. Eat fresh.